Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in the last couple of videos, we understood how the clamper and the clipper circuit works. So in this video, let us solve some problems based on this clipper and the clamper circuit. So first of all, we will see few examples based on the clamper circuit and then after we will take couple of examples based on the clipper circuit. So in this first example, we have been given this clamper circuit and we have been asked to find the output waveform. Now here we have been given that the diode which is used in the circuit is ideal diode and the RC time constant of the circuit is very large. In fact this large RC time constant is the essential condition for the clamper circuit. Now in the previous videos of the clamper circuit I have already explained the circuit analysis in detail. So here instead of going through the entire circuit analysis I will show you the shortcut method using which you can easily solve the problems based on this clamper circuit. Now if you observe the circuit, without this biasing voltage, it is the positive clamper circuit. And if you are aware, this positive clamper shifts the entire waveform towards the positive side. And it shifts the entire waveform by the maximum value which is observed during the negative half cycle. So here, the maximum value during the negative half cycle is equal to minus. 15 volt. That means the entire waveform will get DC shifted by a 15 volt. And if you see the overall output waveform, then it will look like this. That means now the entire waveform has been DC shifted by 15 volts towards the positive side. But in this circuit, we also have a biasing voltage of minus 10 volt. So due to this biasing voltage, this waveform will get further DC shifted by a minus 10 volt. Or in other words, it will get shifted downwards by a 10 volt. And due to that, if you observe the overall output waveform, then it will look like this. So in this way, using this shortcut method, we can easily find the output waveform. But in this method, we need to ensure that the diode is conducting at least for some duration during the time period of the waveform. Because whenever the diode is conducting, then it will offer a very low resistive part to this capacitor. And due to that, this capacitor will get charged to some reference voltage. And in fact, that is the essence of this clamper circuit. For example, in this circuit, this diode is conducting during the negative half cycle. But in the same example, if I change the amplitude of the input waveform, or if I change the biasing voltage, then it is quite possible that this diode may not conduct at all. For example, if I change the amplitude of the input waveform, then this diode will not conduct at all. Because now, the voltage at the anode of the diode is always less than the cathode. Because during the positive half cycle, the voltage at the cathode will be 5 volt, and during the negative half cycle, the voltage at the cathode of the diode will be equal to minus 5 volt. And due to that, this diode will act as an open circuit. And due to that, the output voltage will follow the input voltage. So if this is the input waveform, in that case, the output waveform will be same as the input waveform. And in fact, due to that, this circuit will not work as a clamper circuit. But in this given example, as the diode is conducting for some duration, so we can apply the shortcut method which can be used for the clamper circuit. Alright, so now let's move to the next example. So in this example, the input waveform is a triangular waveform and it is given to this clamper circuit. And we have been asked to find the output waveform. Now once again, here it has been assumed that the diode is an ideal diode and the RC time constant of the circuit is very large. So once again, we will use a shortcut method and we will find the output waveform. Now if you look this circuit, then without this biasing voltage, it is the negative clamper circuit. And we know that this negative clamper circuit will shift the entire waveform towards the negative side. And here it will shift the entire waveform by the maximum value which is observed during the positive half cycle. So here it will shift the entire waveform downwards by a 5 volt. So if you see the output waveform then it will look like this. But in this given example we also have a 3 volt of biasing voltage over here. So due to this biasing voltage, this waveform will get DC shifted by a 3 volt in the positive direction. 
So if you see the overall output waveform, then it will look like this. That means now the waveform will vary from 3 volt to minus 7 volt. And once again, while using this method, we need to ensure that the diode is conducting at least for some duration during the time period. And here, in fact, it is conducting whenever the input waveform is greater than 3 volt. So in this way, by using this shortcut method, we can easily find the output waveform for the clamper circuit. Alright, so now let's move to the next example. So in this example, we have been given this circuit and it is given that this diode D1 is a PN junction diode and it has a forward voltage drop of 0.7 volt. While this diode D2 is a Zener diode and the breakdown voltage of this Zener diode is equal to 6.8 volt. And the square wave is applied to this given circuit. And we have been asked to find the maximum and the minimum value of the output waveform. And once again, here it has been assumed that the RC time constant of the circuit is very large. So here, basically we need to find the maximum and the minimum value of the output waveform. Now, if you observe this circuit, in this circuit, these two diodes will conduct whenever the voltage at this end is greater than the summation of these two voltages. That means whenever the voltage at this end is greater than 7.5 volt. So during the positive half cycle, as the input voltage gain is greater than 7.5 volt, so these two diodes will conduct and the voltage drop between these two terminals will be equal to 7.5 volt. And that voltage will also appear as an output voltage. So during this positive half cycle, this capacitor will get charged in this direction and it will get charged to the voltage of 14 minus 7.5 volt. That means it will get charged to the voltage of 6.5 volt. So now during the negative half cycle, the input voltage will become minus 14 volt and the voltage across the capacitor will be equal to 6.5 volt. So now if you observe, the voltage which is appearing across these two terminals will be equal to minus 20.5 volt and due to that these two diodes will act as an open circuit and due to that this entire voltage will appear as an output voltage so during the negative half cycle the minimum value of the output waveform will be equal to minus 20.5 volt and during the positive half cycle the maximum value is equal to 7.5 volt so for the given example the maximum value of the output waveform is 7.5 volt and the minimum value is minus 20.5 volt. So these were the few examples based on the clamper circuit. Now let us see few examples based on the clipper circuit. So in this example, the sine wave is applied to this clipper circuit and here we have been asked to find the maximum and the minimum value of the output waveform. Now if you observe the circuit, this diode D2 will conduct whenever the voltage at the anode is greater than 4 volt or in other words we can say that whenever the input voltage V in is greater than 4 volt. Similarly, this diode D1 will conduct whenever the voltage at the cathode is less than minus 4 volt or in other words we can say that whenever the input voltage V in is less than minus 4 volt. So these are the conditions for conducting this diode D1 and D2. Now during the positive half cycle Whenever the input voltage is greater than 4 volt, at that time this diode D2 will conduct and this diode D1 will get reverse bias or we can say that it will act as an open circuit. So during the positive half cycle, whenever the input is greater than 4 volt, at that time the output which is appearing across these two terminals will be equal to 4 volt. And whenever this input is less than 4 volt, that means during this time both diodes will act as an open circuit. And due to that, during that time, the output will follow the input voltage. So during the positive half cycle, the maximum value which will appear across the two terminals will be equal to 4 volt. Now during the negative half cycle, whenever the input is greater than minus 4 volt, at that time, both diodes will act as an open circuit. And once again during that time, the output will follow the input voltage. So during that particular time, if you see the output waveform, then it will look like this. Now after that, whenever the input goes below this minus 4 volt, at that time, this diode D2 will remain reverse bias 
but now this diode d1 will become forward biased and now the output voltage v out can be given as minus 4 volt plus the voltage drop across this 10 kilo ohm resistor so if we assume i is the current which is flowing through the circuit then we can say that the output voltage v out is equal to minus 4 volt plus the voltage drop across this 10 kilo ohm resistor so first of all let us find out this current i so this current i can be given as v in plus 4 volt divided by the summation of these two 10 kilo ohm resistors that is equal to 20 kilo ohm and here the output voltage will be minimum whenever the input voltage v in is equal to minus 10 volt so let us find out the current i whenever the input voltage v in is equal to minus 10 volt so at that time the current i can be given as minus 10 plus 4 volt divided by 20 kilo ohm that is equal to minus 3 by 10 kilo ohm so this will be the current which will flow through this given circuit and if we put the value of i in this expression then we can say that the output voltage v out will be equal to minus 4 plus minus 3 by 10 kilo ohm resistor multiplied by 10 kilo ohm resistor that is equal to minus 4 plus minus 3 that means the output voltage v out will be equal to minus 7 volt so this is the value of the output voltage whenever the input voltage v in is equal to minus 10 volt and this will be the minimum value which you will observe during the negative half cycle and if you see the overall output waveform then it will look like this and this will be the minimum value which you will observe during the negative half cycle so the maximum value of the waveform is equal to 4 volt and the minimum value of the waveform is equal to minus 7 volt all right so now let's move to the next example so in this example we have been given this clipper circuit and we have been asked to find the input output transfer characteristic of the given circuit now those who don't know what is the transfer characteristic then basically it defines the relationship between the input and the output that means how the output changes with the input voltage now let's say for a one particular circuit if we have a this type of transfer characteristic that means if we have a straight line then it means that the output changes linearly with the input voltage and let's say for some circuit if we have a transfer characteristic like this it means that the output changes linearly with the input up to certain voltage and then after the output remains constant and if the transfer characteristic looks like this it means that the output is zero for the negative input voltage and for the positive input voltage it varies linearly up to certain voltage and then after the output remains constant so in this way this transfer characteristic defines the relationship between the input and the output waveform so now let us find out the transfer characteristic for the given circuit now here we have been given that the forward voltage drop across the diode is equal to 0.7 volt so this particular diode will conduct whenever the voltage at this end is equal to 5 plus 0.7 that is equal to 5.7 volt similarly this inner diode has a breakdown voltage of 10 volt so this inner diode will provide a constant voltage whenever the voltage between these two terminals is greater than 10 volt and under the forward bias condition the voltage drop across this inner diode will be equal to 0.7 volt so from this to find the transfer characteristic let's divide the input voltage into the four zones so one by one let us find out what will be the output during each zone so whenever the input is between 0 to 5.7 volt at that time this diode will act as an open circuit because the voltage at this end will be less than 5.7 volt and at the same time this inner diode will also act as an open circuit so whenever the input is less than 5.7 volt at that time the output will follow the input waveform and due to that the output will be equal to input voltage now whenever the input voltage is greater than 5.7 volt at that time this diode will conduct and the voltage drop across this diode will be equal to 0.7 volt and due to that the voltage which is appearing between these two terminals will be equal to 5.7 volt 
Now, even if we go beyond this 10 volt, then also the voltage which appears between these two terminals will be equal to 5.7 volt. So, due to that, even if the input voltage goes beyond this 10 volt, then also this inner diode will act as an open circuit. And due to that, whenever the input voltage is greater than 5.7 volt, at that time the output voltage V out will be equal to 5.7 volt. Now let's see what happens during the negative half cycle. So whenever the input is in this particular zone, at that time this diode D will act as an open circuit. And as the voltage is less than 0.7 volt, so this inner diode will also act as an open circuit. So during this zone, the output voltage V out will follow the input waveform. Or we can say that during this time, V out will be equal to V in. Now whenever V in is more negative than this minus 0.7 volt, at that time, this diode D will still remain reverse biased. But now, this inner diode will get forward biased and the voltage drop across this zener diode will be equal to 0.7 volt. So if you measure from this side, then the output voltage V out will be equal to minus 0.7 volt. So whenever this input is less than minus 0.7 volt, at that time, the output voltage V out will be equal to minus 0.7 volt. So this is the output voltage which you will get during each zone. So from this, if we draw a transfer characteristic, then it will look like this. That means whenever the input is varying between minus 0.7 volt to 5.7 volt, at that time the output is following the input waveform. And whenever the input goes below this 5.7 volt, at that time the output will get clipped to the 5.7 volt. And similarly, during the negative half cycle, whenever the input waveform goes beyond this minus 0.7 volt, at that time the output will get clipped to the minus 0.7 volt. So, if you see the overall transfer characteristic, then it will look like this. So, in this way, we can find the transfer characteristic for the given circuit. So, that's it for this video. And I hope in this video, you understood how we can solve a different examples based on the clipper and the clamper circuit. So, if you have any question or suggestion, do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos.